Hey everyone and welcome to Awesome Riff of the Day and How to Play It, wherein we have a bit of a chit chat about the riff and or artist in question, and then I'll show you guys how to play it. Today we're having a look at the classic riff to rock and roll Hoochie Coo by Rick Derringer from his 1973 debut album All American Boy. Now, Rick Derringer first exploded onto the music scene back in the mid-60s with his band The McCoys, who had a massive uh, Top 40 hit with their cover of the track, Hang On Sloopy. Remember that one? Uh, not that I've, I've given it a whole heck of a lot of thought over the years, but uh, I've always thought that they were saying Snoopy, you know, from the, uh, the Charlie Brown comics. Because, uh, you know, who or what uh, the bloody hell is a Sloopy? Uh, regardless, uh, a massive hit under his belt in the mid-60s. Uh, it didn't exactly make the 17-year-old Rick Derringer a household guitar name just yet, as the band was pretty much labeled bubblegum pop. And uh, despite a few more minor pop hits in the latter 60s, none would match the success of the great Sloopy. Uh, disgruntled with this critical dismissal of his band, Derringer and his bandmates shifted gears and started producing a more mature sounding psychedelic rock which of course was all the rage in the late 60s. Uh, it didn't quite work out for them however and album sales were quite poor forcing Derringer and the McCoys to change direction once again. This time, Derringer and a couple of the McCoys would join both Johnny and Edgar Winter's respective groups as both a backup band as well as Derringer sitting in as producer on a couple of the Winter Brothers album releases in the early 70s. It was on Johnny Winter's 1970-71 album, Johnny Winter and... Uh, that Derringer gifted Winter the fantastic blues rock track, Rock and Roll Hoochie Coo, to record for the album. Uh, Winter would have a minor hit with the track in 7071, but in a few years' time, when Derringer decided to forge his own path and leave the fold of the Winter Brothers, he re-recorded and re-released Rock and Roll Hoochie Coo on his own 1973 debut album. This time, lightning struck, and the song went top 40 and has remained a staple of classic rock radio ever since. Derringer himself would spend much of the rest of his career in producer roles, with lots of hired gun guitar appearances on numerous albums by loads of big-name artists. But arguably, his most successful production credits were during the 80s, when he not only discovered, but produced and played on all of Weird Al Yankovic's pop parody releases during his meteoric rise during the MTV era. So yes, Rick Derringer is responsible for bringing Weird Al Yankovic to the masses. Uh, despite it all, however, Rock and Roll Hoochie Coo remains his most well-known solo track and what he's best remembered for overall. Uh, classic rock riffs don't get much more classic than this one, so let's learn how to play it, shall we? All right, Rock and Roll Hoochie Coo by Rick Derringer. Uh, for this little tutorial, we are not going to be covering the solo. We're just covering the, you know, the verse and the, the main opening riff and uh, basically how to play the whole thing minus the solo. We are in standard tuning for this one and it starts like this. <laughs> And uh, that opening there, this, this part here, a lot of double stop work going on here. And uh, yeah, you, sometimes you'll see people playing it like this, so like a blues progression. You even see Rick Derringer himself uh, on a couple of videos on YouTube, he plays it like this. Uh, you know, that blues. Johnny B. Good type of blues progression. Uh, but that's not the way it is on the studio. But I'll show you this anyway. It's A lot of this is very palm muted. So uh, palm mute this. We, we've got an F uh, power chord. And we're just bouncing off the 5 of the A back to the 3 of the A. Moving it up two places to G. And doing the exact same thing. And before going into into that lick there. But that's not what he's doing on the studio version. This is what he's doing on the studio version. Double stops. 
F power chord, double stop on the fives of the A and the D, back to double stops on the three of the A and the D, up to a G power chord. You're going to hit that G power chord twice, and then up to double stops on the A and the D at the seventh, back to the fifth. Five to three, G, seven to five, and then we're into into that lick there. So, F, double stops, into the riff. So coming out of this, into an A power chord, hit it twice, and this whole opening section here can be played all with downstrokes. All downstrokes. Into an A power chord, two more downstrokes, more double stop work going on here. To start this off, after you hit the two A power chords, you're gonna you're gonna get into that. Leading into that, we're going on the third fret of the A to the fourth fret of the A, down uh, into a double stop on the D and the G string at the second fret. You need to start this with an upstroke, that note right there at the third fret of the A, and then a downstroke on the four and then an upstroke on the double stop. Every one of those double stops is an upstroke and you're going to alternate between uh, hitting the open A string. But you need to start this with an upstroke or you're going to have a hard time getting down here for these double stops on the upstroke. So like that, up, down, up. And then uh, after you hit that double stop at the second fret, you're going to hit the open A and get your pinky up here onto the fifth fret double stop. Back to the two. And then open D, G, back onto the second fret double stop. So up to that point. Now we're back to F, double stop again from 5 to 3, C power chord, G power chord, A power chord. And then you're going to get into some muting there, I don't know, 8 or 9 times I guess. And then you're going to go to an A power chord, grab the third fret of the low E, give it a slight little tug and release it off to an E power chord. And then we're into the octaves. And uh, there's, you, you repeat that ten times uh, in kind of like two groups of five. So it starts with an open E. And uh, we're, uh, we're playing octaves here on the A string and the G string. So we're at the fourth fret of the A and the sixth of the G, starting with an open E. And then we're going to repeat that. So you're just moving them up one fret to the five and seven. Four, six, five, seven. And uh, after he plays the first five, he joins himself playing it even an octave higher than that. Right there at the, four, at the 11th fret of the D and the 14th of the G and sliding it up to uh, 12 and 15. And, uh, and then we're into the main uh, verse riff, uh, another cool riff, totally unrelated to the opening riff. So, A power chord, upstroke on the double stops, two of them that time. And then you're going to jump up to the 5th fret double stop on the D and the G, up to 7, back to 5. Start with 2 there at the 2nd fret. And remember, bouncing off the open A. Between each one, you're bouncing on a downstroke off the open A. Into this. That little lick 
right there. Starts with an open A. And then you're going to slide into seven of the D, hit it twice, and then off to five. And then you're going to uh, chromatically go seven, six, five, three on the A string. And then you're going to grab the five of the D and slide it back into seven. And then back into the riff again. And then you're going to repeat the lick again. But this time, instead of going from five to seven on the D, you're going to finish off on the fifth fret. Just basically the, the exact same thing, except it finishes an octave lower on the uh, the low A string. Sorry, on the low E string at the fifth fret, but you're not sliding into it this time. So the first one, the second one, and then you bat your back into the riff. And uh, he's also uh, harmonizing with himself an octave higher on those licks here on the twelves and fives. Sorry, here on the twelves and fourteens. Alright, so now we're into the chorus, and the chorus is just a rehash of a lot of the same stuff that we did during the opening. Uh, so we're coming out of this. We had just done that four times. And uh, so F power chord. And uh, so F power chord twice, and then you're going to do four down, up, down, up mutes. And then you're going to move the whole thing up to G and do the exact same thing. And then we're into the main riff. Back to F. This time we're going to go to the uh, the double stops that we were playing at the beginning from the 5 to the 3 of the A and D string. C power chord, G power chord, back into the main riff. And then repeat the entire thing one more time. So this is the whole chorus coming out of this. We're back into the octaves uh, before the second verse starts. All right, then. Uh, that, my friends, is how you play Rock and Roll Hoochie Coo by Rick Derringer. I certainly hope you found that helpful and maybe a little bit entertaining. And I hope you're well out there in your little guitar corner of the world. And we will see you next time. Cheers.